Hey guys, welcome to Real Films. This is Jared Klein here on ZBTV. Today we're going to be talking about my top eight movie posters. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode. What makes a good movie poster? That's different for everyone. I think a poster should really be a summation of what you're going to see or something that gets you pumped for the film. I'm going to tell you what my top eight movie posters are and what makes them so cool. Number 8, Ghostbusters. While I personally may not be the biggest fan of this movie, I really dig the poster for one main reason. It tells you everything you need to know with one image. You'll notice that this is the theme throughout this list, but this particular poster is interesting because of the art style and the way the patch is drawn. It just really tells you this is going to be a fun action movie. Who you gonna call? Ghostbusters! Something... Number 7, Batman from 1989. Probably the best example of in your face within the movie poster world, this bad boy hit the streets back in 88 or 89, and it was sure to grab the attention of all who saw it. Since it was the first attempt at a serious live action Batman, this poster had to be enticing, and what better way to do it than a BAM in your face shot of the Bat Emblem. Now I can even hear Danny Elfman's iconic score. Number 6, The Godfather. From the fantastic logo that highlights the main theme of the movie to the red rose on Don Corleone's jacket, it's simply fascinating to see this poster and it instantly intrigues you and pushes you to watch the film. And this film is considered by many to be one of the greatest ever made. This poster spotlights the lead of the film, Marlon Brando, as it should, and stands as a reminder that minimalism can certainly help sell a film when done correctly. Number 5. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation the newest entry on this list, this poster is a great callback to the action movies of the 80s and gives us great glimpses of the action to come when watching this film. The biggest figure is Tom Cruise's Ethan Hunt, obviously, and is letting the star power shine. But the rest of the cast is given their due in this poster that is equal parts clean and simple, as well as action-packed and enticing. Number 4, Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring. While Return of the King will always be my favorite movie of the series, Fellowship without a doubt has the best poster. The rightfully so concerned look on Frodo's face says it all about the upcoming tone of the movie. We see all the epic shots of the supporting characters lined around him and an epic picture of the enemy Nazgul at the bottom, signifying the threat to come. It's just a great poster for a great movie. Number 3, Jurassic Park. Okay, truth be told, the quality of how this movie turned out has a lot to do with how I feel about this poster. But still, the mystery of what we're about to see is never blown by this poster, because it sets us up with the perfect tagline, an adventure 65 million years in the making. We see the silhouette of T-Rex bones and the title like Jurassic Park, and that's all we need to know to understand that this movie's gonna rock. Number 2, Raiders of the Lost Ark. 
The fact that Harrison Ford is front and center in this poster shows that the makers of this knew what they were doing. At the time, they were capitalizing off Ford's success with Star Wars by portraying him prominently. However, Ford is what makes this film, and it is the reason this film has a soul. The snapshot surrounding him of the action to come is great, but I believe the simple white border makes the image pop and gives it a clean, refined look. And my favorite movie poster, number one, Back to the Future, and here's why it's my favorite. This picture tells you everything you need to know about the movie with one simple, cool image. From the shocked expression on Marty's face to the streaks of fire from the DeLorean's tires. This poster fires on all cylinders, pun intended. The color scheme immediately catches the eye, and the title font is one of the most iconic in memory. This poster has constantly spoken to me since I first saw it. Always appreciate good art when you see it, especially when it's a great movie poster. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, stay tuned for more segments here on ZBTV. God bless and remember, go watch you some movies. See ya. Hey, welcome back to Tomato, a show where we talk about upcoming movies and decide whether or not they are worth our time at all. Uh, here with me today, we've got uh, Keith Williams, uh, Hannah Hardwick, the lovely Angel Fox, and that Alex. Guy. That guy. Alex. That guy. <laughs> Alex. Alex. <laughs> Alex Cottle. Yep. Anyway, all right, first on our agenda, The Jungle Book, the new pseudo-gritty Life of Pi looking uh, remake. Yep. It looks a little bit like Life of Pi. If only just because of the Indian kid. But. <laughs> Well, I'm, I just be <laughs> honest here. <laughs> I'm hoping that they actually follow the book because the original mm. Jungle Book was written by a Buddhist, yeah, and it was just it was very calm and very like. But it also showed that like it was very like really strange side of nature. Oh, well, it was a big like metaphor. Really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. I, I, I just I kind of wondered why all the animals are larger than life <laughs> in size, because if you see the little boy, this is the animal. I'm like. Well, does, 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 does that even happen in real life? Well, I mean, tigers are that big. Yeah, tigers, tigers are, are gigantic. <laughs> but you know, like, especially around India. Um, but I don't know. It seems interesting to me. Um, it's certainly the animation in it is like crazy. Yeah. Good. Well, they're going to put a lot of time into it. Yeah. Oh, it seems like they already have. Yeah. And uh, so Bill Murray is blue, uh, as blue. Yeah. Well, Murray they got Bill blue. Murray, Scarlett Johansson. Um, Christopher Walken. I think I think Christopher Walken's the. Is he Shere Khan? I hope he is. Yeah, or. Uh, <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> I just hope Mowgli. this comes out really yeah. good. I just, it's I so just, nice to see you. I just want the orangutan song. That's all I want. Uh, it won't no, be that was written it. by Terry Gilliam. Really? Yeah, that's cool. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> I want the bare necessities. <laughs> it's the bare necessities. Which, the sweet like, and simple sister. I know with the Cinderella one, they put a lot of like kickbacks to the older like classic yeah. Disney yeah. movies so they may not have <coughs> any like music that at all and they may wait to the credits again. <laughs> like, uh, it doesn't look to me like the kind of movie that's going to have any music especially no. since they didn't have any in the like previews at all. Which yeah. I like because it's like yeah. action packed like with all the apes oh, coming it seems out. Like, it seems like legitimately like the old Jungle Book where it's yeah. kind of actually sort of gritty and sort of like they're taking. They're taking it well, serious. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I yeah. I really hope they do do a good job because for me the Jungle Book is kind of a little tiring. And mm -hmm. I think because there's like four or five other versions out there. I'm like this. This is getting tiring to me. How many How many Jungle Books do I have to see? Yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I love Maybe the Jungle Book. Maybe it'll be I've seen one. every single one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping this one's definitely earmarked for success because it it's executed well. Seem, it's seemingly, seeming yeah. well, it, yeah, seemingly executed well from what we've what <coughs> footage has been released. And if it does follow the book, I think it would be really promising. Well, it's just really hard with these kinds of movies because you can never tell yeah. just from the trailers alone. Because you know that's what trailers supposed to do is get you to go to the movie. Yeah, give so, you some mystery. Yeah. So I can I can see it being good, and I can also see it being really bland. Like, it's a it's a cruel tactic to be like, oh, I hope this is good, so I'm gonna go see it in hopes that it's really good, and then it'd be absolutely just bland and terrible and yeah. thoughtless. I mean, it's like it's a pretty picture to look at, but there's no substance. Yeah. Right. Uh, next on the agenda, we've got uh, Huntsman. Huntsman, the new Huntsman. 
that sequel to that great movie that everyone loves. <laughs> I actually think it's a prequel. Is it a prequel? Is it a, yeah. It, it might be a prequel. It is a prequel. It's a prequel. Because that one... Uh, the Queen. Did, she's alive. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how th- enthusiastic we are. Yeah. Where did the second queen have. come from? Charlize no, Theron needs to stop. Yeah. She, well, she's. Stop. It's a prequel, so she's the same one. She it's the same one. Yeah. They have to bring less her back. milk covered in her. Maybe it'd be like the opposite of the Star Wars movies, where the prequel's actually good. Maybe. No. <laughs> no. Uh, I, well, it wasn't good to, to begin with, so I don't know like how much they actually have to work with to that, that's like, true. make it. I don't know why they called it the Huntsman. Because I it's about the Huntsman. Yeah. Because Chris. But I don't smart. understand also why they named the first movie Snow White and the, Snow White White and the Huntsman. When it's Kristen like only Stewart. vaguely Snow White. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, just Kristen oh, Stewart. Here's it, Kristen Stewart. Like I'm sure with no emotion. They, <laughs> I'm sure that they started out as like this and is her Snow clothes White are always script. falling off. Yeah. And this is a snow and like snow white script and we're going like book like all this and then they just started chopping things and yeah. putting cool things in there and it became more than what it was before like a co- completely different beast than yeah. snow Which... white and no one would recognize it as an actual snow white story but you still call it that snow white is sup- is not really supposed to be a, a like a strong individual but She's supposed to be an icon for a steadfast and strong-minded woman. And they just, they're just they like, let's brush that over and bring well, in the like, muscle. Yeah, and then well, Charlize Theron covered in milk. Yeah, it, it's Hollywood things. Like, you can't be uh, strong unless you're physically strong. Yeah. Like, I thought you it was could name cream. one character in... Uh, I'm just saying, milk. Um, it wasn't milk. It was like, cream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if someone could name one character in, like, a big budget... Like Hollywood film that was strong mentally, that was a woman that wasn't strong physically, I would be surprised. The Huntsman, it's not happening for me. Uh, <laughs> I think it's just kind of like predictable for me a lot too, because it just came into my head. Like, I bet you anything, they're going to add like Kristen Stewart or something at the very end yeah. to be like. She'll be Whoa. like in the mirror and they're like, Whoa. Like, mirror, mirror on the wall, who spares of all. It's like, oh, yeah. there's another Disney pun right there. It's going to be one of those <laughs> things where it's going to be like the after credit scene, and it's going to be like, yeah. look, there's a potential sequel. And you're going to be like, <laughs> that's the first so thing. No. The first She's one. watching Twilight on the mirror. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, that's like a on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> Makoto Scarlett. No, it, Scarlett. It might be a funny thing where Twilight actually is a better love story than this. <laughs> wow. That's not... That's, <laughs> that's horrifying. <laughs> all right, with, with that oh bombshell, I think we should uh, give our editor a break and shut the commercial. <laughs> we'll see you after the break. Dude, we've been out all day. Breckenridge Hall. What's so cool about Breckenridge Hall? Hey there, ever wish you knew how to control fire? Or had a mini version of yourself? Or you could be anywhere you want with the snap of your fingers? Well then, become a part of Convergent Media! For more information, go to moreheadstate.edu slash Convergent Media. Hey, welcome back to Tomato. Let's talk about some film. Uh, I guess our last one's uh, Amityville, The Awakening. Has anyone got any like first impressions about that one? I'm just like, shake it up, because Bella Thorne. <laughs> Bella Thorne. <laughs> <laughs> Disney. It's made by the uh, same people that did uh, Insidious, uh, who have been on a slow but steady decline in my eyes, but are still decent. Insidious. Insidious. Um, Paris- Insidious. Paranormal Activity, Sinister. All that fun. So it started down here at Paranormal Activity and then went up to Insidious and then it's slowly going down. I think they have some <laughs> some really strong like jump scares and they mm-hmm. are good at building suspense, but when mm-hmm. it comes to actual psychological horror, they kind of fall short. They're like, well, oh, it's a true story or it's based on true events, but it's not. Mm-hmm. And anyone who researches it can easily just be taken out of that fun yeah. as soon as they realize that. Well, it's, 
Yeah, it's, um, it's a big problem with the writing, too, where they depend a lot on just the camera work and all the effects. Yeah. Which, it, it's it's fine. Like I said, it's still up here. It, it's acceptable. I like spooky camera work. But uh, I don't know. I think they should back it up with a bit more of story and character and those important things. All right, well, uh, that's about it for uh, Tomato Today. So we got uh, The Jungle Book, which I guess... Everybody seems pretty cool with, yeah. right? Uh, I'm gonna, probably going to go see it. Uh, we got The Huntsman, which seems like everybody... <laughs> no. 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 And um, no, yeah. it's not going to happen. <laughs> um, and then Amityville, which seems like everyone's it's hit and miss. You, you're going to watch it. I'm going to watch, watch it. Oh, I love Amityville. I'll probably watch it. It doesn't look like anything else coming I, out. Like, I, I like the company. I like the basic story, so whatever. Uh, That's cool. Yeah, yeah cool. So, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in to ZBTV. Uh, join us in a couple weeks for the next tomato. We'll see you next time. Frame. I'm Carrie Maynard and I'm Angel Fox and today we are talking about the amazing world of gumball. Hello! Ah! Hello! Welcome to the water cells! So the amazing world of gumball is a cartoon that revolves around a blue cat named gumball and his adoptive brother Darwin who is a goldfish with legs! <laughs> Yeah, they have a bunch, I mean, they have their own family, a mother, Nicole, their father, Richard, and their little sister, Anais. Which, they're crazy. Absolutely insane. They have their own uh, fantastic moments and their own character, and, but the show mostly revolves around just Gumball and Darwin and their shenanigans, their everyday lives with school, love and destroying half the city. The multimedia look of the show is ultimately one for really interesting visuals, but two for the convenience and creativity of the studios who work on it. Do so you think with uh, so many different styles and ways of doing things that it wouldn't really come together? Yeah, it would like mismatch or something like that, but yeah. it really doesn't. No, oh, it flows together perfectly. Nothing is out of the way or looks weird. It all is very colorful and very smoothly animated and just the way they kind of put it together really does make it its own little world. Yeah, they especially, take, They take such care and detail for each character no matter if it's like a f initial character or like a secondary character. It's it's always gonna have that same intricacy. It's always gonna have that same detail. It's gonna have a backstory. The modern humor in it is just, it's really great. And you can get this deadpan humor. You can get like even sadistic humor. It's a from mix it. of all kinds of different humors. Like, um, like they kind of alternate. It's like slapstick, visual gags, and then some of the humor is strictly in the dialogue itself. Three, two, one. <laughs> Come on, I'm sure it wasn't that bad. Not that bad! If I did that in the cage fight, I'd be disqualified! Every single character is written so perfectly for being at a young age. Exactly. It's almost like they've somehow pulled like scripts and scripts of stuff out of their own childhood brain. And I think a lot of times people think of, oh, well, this is what I thought of as a kid, and then they immediately apply it to that show because, again, it's very applicable when you've got a child that you're focusing on as a character to just apply your own childhood to it. Yeah. My favorite character, like, now that I think about it, I can't really decide between the two. It's like, it's Nicole and Gumball. They are my favorite characters. I absolutely love how upfront and kick butt Nicole can be. Oh, she sets stuff on fire just by looking at them. She, she knows has karate. Heat vision. She has heat vision. She knows karate can run up walls, on the sides of buildings. She's fantastic. And Gumball, he's where most of the humor comes from. And it's just so hilarious and fantastic. And he's just so naive and yet funny at the same time. <laughs> Nah, this 
this laser pit is garbage. Uh, I have two favorite characters as well. I really like Penny. I know at first she, she seems like this just, oh, girl next door, really innocent and all of this stuff and just not as 3D as some of the other characters might feel in personality. Literally. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> but it just, it makes me so happy that she's got something under her shell. Like she comes out of her shell and she's this cool like fairy magic shifter. It's so cool. It's just how you feel. And this is how I feel. a monster, but he made her beautiful with his love, like in their play, but backwards. Yeah, I kind of think we all got that, Dad. Probably my ultimate favorite character is Darwin, because I feel like as a kid, I was, I was like Darwin. I was like, okay, I'm this little fish with no legs, and then magically I get legs, and I'm just like, how did this happen? What am I supposed to do? It, it speaks for itself. Literally the title, is. The Amazing World of Gumball. It's amazing. <laughs> you need to watch it. Watch yeah. It. Well, I think that's all we have for this keyframe. <laughs> Join us next time where we will actually be talking about an anime on keyframe. <laughs> One Punch! One Punch Man. All right. Join us next time on CBTV and go watch you some cartoons. This library features state-of-the-art technology to help you do research and prepare for class projects, as well as books, magazines, journals, and more. The library staff can help you do research and find needed resources. It also offers quiet study space, collaborative workspace, presentation preparation area, and a coffee shop. Get that camera out of my face. I'm tired of you. All of you are exactly the same. Every single one of you. I am tired of Sid Gray and I'm tired of his stupid little fangirls coming out of <laughs> nowhere. <clears throat> Listen here, little girl. You have no idea what good magic is or anything. You and Sid Gray are just a bunch of freaks. <laughs> Cool. Hey, what's up? You want to be in a movie? I don't want to do this. I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions. It won't take long. When did you get your powers? I don't know. I've had them for as long as I can remember. I just had them. What are your powers? Telepathy and telekinesis. Can you demonstrate? <laughs> Surprised Professor X hasn't called you yet. That's not funny. Uh, just trying to lighten the mood. My mom used to hit me because of these powers. Lock me up in a room and wouldn't let me eat for days. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> just trying to lighten the mood. <laughs> well, so uh, your, your mother didn't abuse you then? No, she did.
So, uh, can you like read minds or stuff or whatever? Yeah, that's kind of what telepathy entails. That's freaking awesome. What? What? What did you just say? I said that was awesome. No, you called me a freak. What? No, I didn't. I didn't. Yes, you did. I am not a freak. Hi. Wait, hold up. What? The game about to start. Hey, y'all, the game about to start. 